Last week I, I started a, uh, a series, a new series, um, on help God I want to change. And uh, every one of us have areas of our life and, or things in our life or things about our life that need changing. Amen? And that's so, so important to not avoid and not think, gee, I can't do this or it'll never happen. Um, last week I spent the whole or, uh, day, uh, the whole message showing you scripturally that God created us to change. That's, that's the thing. We are created with the ability to, to change. And so we'll go over that a little bit again this, this, uh, uh, this week. But maturity, it, you know, it comes when you stop making excuses for your life and you start making changes. Amen? Isn't that right? You, you just, when people have so ingrained with an excuse, it's their go-to plan, you know, why they don't, why they shouldn't do something or can't do something, um, what happens is it's, the, it's bondage. The greatest bondage that anyone has it doesn't come from the devil, it comes from ourselves. Uh, it's, it's from our own minds. It's in our own minds. Every one of us can get up in the morning and um, look in the mirror and wave to our greatest problem. Uh, amen. That's, that's us. We, we have to learn that... Uh, the things that are impossible with man are what? Possible with God. Amen? Praise the Lord. There, I had to clean my glass. I couldn't see you out there. Praise the Lord. Still can't, but that don't matter. Praise God. Um, you know, it, it, in Ecclesiastes, and starting out last week was, you know, help God, it was, uh, um, God, we're created to change. This week, uh, the title is Eternity is in Man's Hearts. I don't want to go to a scripture if you open your Bibles. If you don't have them, follow along or get out your phone. I know everyone does that nowadays. It's in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter in the 11th verse. And read this out loud with me, all right? It says this. He has made everything. Come on, everyone read out loud. Is that up there? No, nope, we're not there yet. Ecclesiastes 3.11. Read it out loud with me. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. Kind of like, you know, even though eternity is in our hearts, it says natural man doesn't have the ability to comprehend it. Natural man doesn't have the ability to take hold of it. The King James Version actually renders that word eternity as world, and uh, it's everything in this cursed, earth cursed system, everything in this, from this earth cursed time in, in, amongst corruption, uh, God put everything in the heart of mankind that we can live uh, above the corruption, that we can live fulfilling all destiny, all plans, all purposes of God. It's in our heart. But the natural man, they can't perceive that. Amen? That's, the Bible says, I hasn't seen, near heard, uh, neither has entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them who love him. And the word heart there doesn't mean what this is saying. It means in our comprehension and um, uh, in our, our soul. It says, but, um, but we have been given the mind of, of, of Christ. We've been given the spirit of God. And he reveals all that to us. Amen. And so there's a process, though. We have, to, we have to work with Him. Amen. That's why the Bible tells us, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. A lot of times you're sitting in a service and, you know, the teacher is sharing and preaching or whatever, and, uh, it's really, and you're thinking, man, I wish Aunt Nellie was here to hear this, or I wish my husband would have come with me, or I wish my wife would have been here. You know, it, no, it's, you're the only one you can change. And it's being taught to you because that's what God wants for you. Amen? Um, and uh, obviously you need to invite people and you need to tell them, come to church. Uh, the Spirit says come, right? Revelation 22, it says the Spirit says come, the bride says come, and all those that hear say come. Amen? So our message should be come. Come on. Because people will be changed by the Word of God. They'll be changed in God's presence. 
All that's put within you, all the wonderful things beyond your intellect, beyond your capability of being educated, beyond your understanding, beyond your, your conniving, beyond your skills, beyond your, beyond your uh, um, giftings, God will perform through you. Amen? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, man was created in the image and likeness of God, and so he was given dominion over all of the rest of God's creation. Because that's what God does as king. He has dominion. And so he's given us dominion over all the works of God's hands. Amen? And um, he, he, uh, he accomplishes his purposes in his time. The, there's, you know, there's a time and a season for every purpose under heaven. But a lot of times people miss God's timing. They miss the purpose. The, the greatest potentials uh, uh, for this world is lying in graveyards. Unfulfilled dreams, unrealized destinies, uh, unfathomed hopes. And, you, you know, they, they went to their grave not doing, not accomplishing. I think it'd be a sad thing that God would put us in this world, the Bible says in a specific time, in a specific place, and we do not make change while we're here. We don't help things to grow, increase, prosper, become better. We either just live off the land, so to speak, or we, we allow corruption to take over in a way that our lives get worse and worse and worse. That'd be a tragic thing. Well, that's a, there's a lot of that in the world, amen? A lot of that in the world. The little boy, you know, he, he, his, he has a habit of falling out of bed. And uh, his, his uncle came to stay with the family one day, and they, they set up a cot in the room with the little boy. And in the middle of the night, the boy rolls and plunk, out of bed he goes. And the uncle puts, helps him put, go back to sleep, and, and uh, he, he doesn't even wake up. That was, I, I was asked to speak at the... Um, uh, university, it's called Houghton Tech. It's a university now, but it was just Houghton Tech then, one of the top uh, engineering colleges in the world, actually, up in the Upper Peninsula. And I was asked to speak up there, and, and so Paul and, and uh, the, uh, my children were, uh, my wife, my children were with me, and Paul, he kind of, he would fall out of bed once in a while, and, but he wanted to sleep on the top bunk. We had to stay in the dorms of the college and so he had to sleep on a top bunk and in the middle of the night I, 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 could, I opened my eyes, I heard something, I opened my eyes, I could see him fall past me, whoop, right onto the floor. He goes, oh, oh, I picked him up, put him back in the bed, there we go, he didn't even know he fell out of bed the next morning other than, man, I'm a little sore, dad. Praise God. Well, this little boy, he's falling out of bed and in the morning though, the uncle asked him, he says, oh, you, you fell out of bed last night. And the, and the little guy says, yeah, and the mom says, yeah, he, he, he has a habit of doing that. He, can, he falls out of bed. He says, well, why do you think, you know, why, son, why do you think that you're falling out of bed all the time? He says, well, I think I'm staying too close to where I got in. And that's a lot of Christians. They stay too close to where they got in. They think, well, I got Jesus. I'm going to heaven one day. That's it. I don't have to change. I have to become different. I, I'll just, this is it. Just, you know, that old song by... Yeah, it doesn't matter, I'll make, great, date myself, but que sera, sera, right? What will be, it will be. And then they just think, that's it. You know, God's in control. He just makes everything happen. That's the, one of the foolish statements that I've heard in life. God would not have given man a free will if that was the case. But we have a free will. We get to choose, don't we? He, sa he says, I've called heaven and earth against you today, right? Deuteronomy 19. I've set before you life, I've set before you death, I've set before you blessings, I've set before you cursings. Therefore, you choose. You do it. He isn't going to make anything happen, even though he has, he has it set. He has it planned. It's for us. I'd be like having, you know, uh, uh, having a vacation planned as a family, and uh, all the family goes, and you stay. It's like home alone, right? You stay home. Home alone. Uh, because you didn't, you, you didn't decide to do what was planned to do. Amen? And so God has a lot of plans for us. He says, Deuteronomy, or Jeremiah 29, these plans that I think for you. 11th verse. 
are, are thoughts of good, not evil. Thoughts of hope and an expected end. He has an expected end in every area of your life, not just for your life in general. There's an expected end. You're, there's fulfillment for you, in other words. Turn to somebody and say, there's fulfillment for you. Praise God. God accomplishes his purposes in his time, but until a person enters into eternity, they can't comprehend the total plan of God. Time was a creation, and it became corrupted. And so God, we're bound, right, as man, we're bound in this earth-cursed time. This corrupted time. It, it, uh, but God sent his only son who invested, not only created the time and created all matter within time, he invests himself into time to redeem us and take us from time into eternity. And until man enters into eternity, I don't enter eternity when I, you know, pass away and go to heaven or am raptured out of here. I'm in eternity when I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and he comes into my life. Eternity comes into my life. The fulfillment of. And so now I can have all that he has for me. There's nothing. Look at somebody and say, you can have everything God has for you. It should be fulfilled for you guys. It should be fulfilled for you. Amen? Don't just think, oh boy, I wish I had what, you know, somebody might grow up and increase and they become a huge, you know, a conglomerate owner and a millionaire and, you know, whatever. And, and you think, man, I, you know, I, I always felt that I should be doing that. Well, do it then. Do what God has put in your heart. Accomplish. He says he'll give you the desire of your heart, but we have to trust in him and commit our way unto him and he'll bring it to pass. And that's what we're going we're gonna to start looking at today. Uh, listen, man has the capability of conceiving eternity. He has the capability, to, uh, and, or, the, or I should say the struggle, to apprehend the everlasting that God has for us. And he has the, everyone has the longing for eternal life. Every person on the face of this earth. That's why there's so many religions. There wouldn't be all these religions if man didn't want the eternal life. They're all looking for it. But we have the answer, don't we? It's in our lives. It's in our hearts. And we have that opportunity. The best way is to let it be fulfilled in us and show the world. That glorifies him. That's why Jesus said something so simple. Ask and you'll receive that your joy may, would be made full. And the Father will be glorified in the Son. Amen? Him being realized, glorified in this earth. Him being a, a, a spectacle for everyone that they can see and, and, and desire also to come into the kingdom. Well, again, the first lesson last week, I talked uh, a lot and showed scripturally how God was created man to change. I want to go over that a little bit. In Genesis 6, 9 through 12 um, uh, it says, we'll skip the 10th verse, but it says, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Isn't that something? For God to say that one man was perfect. We'll look at that in a minute. We didn't last week. We'll look at it this week. It says, Noah walked with God. The earth also was corrupt before God. Do you see that? The earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Isn't that something, even though the earth, isn't that today, yeah. right, the violence today? Didn't Jesus say in the last day it'll be as the day of Noah? Yeah. F corruption is being fulfilled and violence is at hand. But Noah, he was, it, it, it says, he, he was um, just and perfect. Even though there was corruption, he lived in a different way. The word perfect here, um, it means he was a man of integrity and truth. In other words, Noah was a man that would take God at his word. There was one man in the whole earth that would take God at his word. Did he? Yes, he did. He built an ark when he didn't even know what one was. They went by water that never rained before. God says, it's going to rain. Okay, I'll take you at your word. I'll build an ark. And he did it. And God saved him 
and, and, and seven other people who ate in his family and, and uh, many animals because of what he did. He just took God at his word. It says, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Twelfth verse, so God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Who did that? Satan. Look what a rotten Satan is. No, all flesh corrupted their own way. They corrupted their way. Why? Because they're in this earth curse system. When Adam fell, mankind became a slave to their five physical senses. What you can touch, taste, see, hear, and smell. There's the gates. That's why it says in Psalm 24, uh, I'll share it. That's why it says in Psalm 24, it says, Who's going to ascend to the holy hill? Man's whose hands are clean of all men's blood, whose hearts are pure. He will ascend to the holy hill. So lift up your heads, O oh you gates, and be you lifted up, you everlasting doors or ancient doors or eternal doors. And the king of glory will come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the, the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. So we, we, we see that here is our five senses. Lift up your heads, O oh you gates. Submit your five senses. Lay, lay that down. Allow God to come in. Allow him to come in. Otherwise, it's through your eye gate that causes corruption in your mind. The corruption of this world comes into your life, into your heart, the, the, your mind's eye, I should say, I guess, uh, by the senses. So and what you hear, and maybe you didn't hear things perfect, and all of a sudden you're thinking ill of somebody, corruption came in. Maybe you see something and you, and you don't understand it, but you, you, all of a sudden you start thinking about that and, and the corruption comes with what you saw. So it starts being twisted and you think ill of somebody. You start looking bad at some people, some circumstance. You take, get a job and you're like SpongeBob SquarePants, right? The first day. Your bag is packed, your lunch is packed in. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. But after a couple months of hearing the, the union workers and the, you know, they ain't my job and this and that, all of a sudden, oh, this rotten job. What changed? Did the job? No, corruption came into a person's mind and it's stealing from them. All that God would have for them with the gift that he gave them. You need to get the, the, the series that I taught on gifts. The kingdom of heaven is all about gifts, right? God, he, he creates everything, didn't he? Jesus created everything, and the last thing he creates was man. And the very first thing in, in um, uh, fellowship with Adam was, he gave him everything that he created. The very first thing in, 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 in their relationship was a gift. And so Adam gives it away. Right? Satan, no. He, he's, the, he's the god of this earth. He's the prince of the power of the air. Right? He's called. Praise the Lord, not for us, but for the world. And so what did God do? He didn't say, gee, you know, do I have egg on my face? Now we're done. No, he says, I know what I'll do. I'll get it all back by giving another gift. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. And when we received we couldn't even receive Jesus unless he gave us a gift of faith to believe in him. You're saved by grace through faith and that's not yours. It is a gift from God, right? And when we receive Jesus' righteousness, his righteousness is immediately given to us from him as a gift. And it says in Romans 5 and 17, it says, If you will receive the abundance of God's grace and the gift of his righteousness, you'll rule and reign in this life as a king. And then he says, there's a, there, there's a lot more, but he says, then I'm a, I'm, the Father wants to give you a gift, Jesus says. Oh, really? What's that? The Holy Spirit. If you ask the Father, he'll, I'll give you the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, he immediately gives you what? Gifts. Tongues, interpretation, prophecy, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, discerning the spirits, miracles, supernatural faith. Amen? And the gifts of healing. It, the whole kingdom is about gifts.
And God, even though the earth was corrupt, he took one man that would believe his word, believe him, trust him. And he says, oh, I'm going to destroy man and everything in this earth, except I, through this one, Noah, I'll save a remnant that will come and bring life again to what has been corrupted. And that's our responsibility. See, that's why he put you in that job. Not because it's the greatest job on the face of the planet and you won't have any problems. So you bring life into that place. That's why he gave you the woman you're married to or the man you're married to. Not because they're the greatest things in sliced bread. No. So you can bring life into a relationship contrary to anything that takes place. That's why he put you here in the church. That's why he put you into your church, wherever you are, wherever you're listening. So you bring life into where you are. Why? Because eternity is bounding your heart. And you have now the, the ability, the authority to take hold of it, to see goodness. But when we open up our five gates to this world, corruption comes in. That's why we wash ourselves, the Bible says, with the water of the Word. That's why we need to be washed from the corruption through what we heard, through what we saw, through what we felt. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be you lifted up, you ancient doors, and the King of glory will come in. In other words, submit that element to God. Just like Noah. Well, praise the Lord. And, and so... Noah was a man, the Bible says, that was just and perfect, and, and, but every, all the whole earth corrupted itself. Genesis 6.13 says, And God said to Noah, read it, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them and the earth. That's what corruption has done. We're seeing the fulfillment now in this last day, right? We're seeing the cup filled up to the full measure of corruption and violence. After corruption took the whole earth, the Lord then destroyed everything. But now, with, starting with Noah, covenants were built. Covenants were built. Noah, was, wasn't there a covenant? He put the rainbow in the sky. He said, I'll never do this again. In fact, it'll never be a deluge again. We'll never be flooded. There, I believe there were two floods, but the one that we see uh, specifically spelled out in Scripture. But the next time, it's going to be burned up. Flood just, just washes away the dirt, but the, a burning destroys all the dirt or all the, all, the, all the junk, all the dead stuff, and it causes new life to come, doesn't it? And that's why the, it'll all be burned up with fire. And there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I can't imagine what creation looked like, but for six days God worked, remember? For six days. And at the end of that time, he rested. And then when Adam sinned, he had to go to work again, didn't he? But the first work was work of creation. The second work was the work of redemption. For six days, he created everything. For 6,000 years, he worked the work of redemption. And we're to see the fulfillment of it. Even our bodies. This corruptible will put on incorruption. This mortal will put on immortality. Amen? In the twinkling of an eye. God will get this done. It isn't me through exercise. You need to exercise. But it isn't me through exercise or the, the greatest beauty aid or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that, you, you know, people with... Uh, uh, body altering, altering surgeries or whatever it is. Um, that's not how. That's the work of man's hand. We're supposed to enter into his rest. That's the seventh day. That's why on the seventh day, it says in the first day, it was the evening and the morning, and they were the first day. 
and the evening and the morning were the second day, and the evening and the morning were the third day, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day, and the evening and the morning was the sixth day, but on the seventh day there was no evening and morning. Why? It's the place of eternity. The place we have to enter, labor to enter into that place where eternity has its purpose fulfilled in our lives now. Where what God has to do, it goes beyond our own strength, beyond our own works, and He accomplishes for us. Now, eternity is ready to be revealed in your life. Not one day, now, right now. Eternity is ready to be revealed in your life. Say, well, I can't do that. I don't have an education. Eternity is ready to be revealed in your life. You don't need it. Amen? Jesus had a predicament. The, uh, the disciples came to him and said, Jesus, man, you've been preaching at these people for 24 hours here. They're about... They're tired and hungry, you know, you got to do something. He says, well, you give, them, you give them something to eat. And they said, how are we going to do that? They looked in their own strength. They looked to this corrupted world. And they said, we don't have enough money to feed them all. There wouldn't even be enough to buy if we, you know, to, to feed them. And, and Jesus says, what do you have? Five loaves, two fishes. He says, okay, make them sit down. He says, Father, thank you. And he takes from eternity. And he does in the place of rest, the Sabbath. The seventh day. The work's all done, guys. And he says, here. And from a place of eternity, he starts supernaturally feeding these people, didn't he? And they saw it isn't by our strength, not by might, not by power, but by the Holy Spirit, says the Lord, right? Well, they saw that Jesus was living from a place beyond this corrupted time. Beyond this limited space. Beyond this place that is a chokehold on all mankind. And then he brings you into that place, and we now are to work to, to be there. That's where we're to constantly focus. That's where I want to live. That's where I'm going to be. When the Lord told us, me to, you, you, I want you to build a radio station, I knew nothing about radio, I knew nothing about communications. I, you know what? I, I called somebody in that I knew that owned a satellite network and um, said, hey, you know, um, how do you go about this? He says, well, you got to apply for it. You know, there's actually a window opening in a couple months, and the, window, the government has to open a window, and then you apply, and out of the applicants, they choose whoever. And so um, uh, what happened was... Uh, I said, okay, wonderful. He says, well, here, let me give you my engineer's name, and you can call him and kind of talk to him about applying. I'm not too ha up on that. And uh, so even though he was a television engineer, um, he said, well, this is what I know, and go on this uh, place and get this. And he sent us a, some kind of a form, and we filled everything out and sent it in, and we started to pray. That was it. Didn't know what to do, just prayed, okay. You know, like, duh. Uh, I don't know. And seven years later, we prayed, just thanking God all the time. Thank you for our radio station. Thank you, Lord, that we have a radio station. Thank you that you wouldn't ask us if it wasn't there to give us. Just like the disciples in Jesus. It was there. They just had to tap into eternity to take it. Seven years later, we get a letter in the... And by the, we get a letter from the F... Uh, uh, FCC then saying we are not allowed to purchase any equipment, we are not allowed to do any designing, we're not allowed to do anything until we get the okay. Whatever equipment we buy beforehand, when we get the okay, they find out about it, they take our license from us, we will not have it. You just got to wait on them. Of course, you know, I'm in control government element. And so you do as I do and how I say and that's it and we'll have a good relationship. So we did. And seven years later, we get a letter. Hey, you got your radio station. You now have a year f to uh, figure it out. You have a year to get done what you need done. We didn't have a dime saved. Nothing. We just prayed. And we get it. 
Well, all of a sudden, a, a guy came, uh, Bob Getz, and, and he doesn't even go to church, doesn't even live around here. He came, and he says, man, the Lord told me, he says, you, doing, you have a radio station, you're doing some radio station, the Lord told me in prayer to give you 10 grand. Here. Well, that's a good start, praise the Lord. And after that, money just started coming in. That engine called up that engineer, he said, well, you need to get this and this and this and this, and okay. Then we called him up after we had it all in a big pile, he says, Put this to this, and this to this, and this to this. We even got our own antenna here, our own tower, and our own antenna, which the tower we got from the government. Amen. And after seven years and all this happened, then we get it running, and it took us a year, and we putzed, and you can play and practice and that. And after that year, you're, you're done. Whatever you did, that's it. So we, we got it. In fact, people are listening to me right now on uh, WDYD 109 point, or 100.9 right? uh, FM here in town. And people, there was over 750 churches that applied for that permit. And we were the only one that got it. I got calls from all over the United States. Dr. Roman, how did you do that? I don't know. We prayed. We just, the Lord told us to do it. We put our application, just thanked them that it was ours. We tapped into the eternal and we allowed it to come to pass in here. Not doubting. That was, that was uh, like Abraham. He, he hoped against hope without doubting. He, even though it was past time to have children. He, what was eternal is what mattered to him. That's what got to start mattering to you. That's what will change your life, change your day, change your week, change your month, change your future. It will change your marriage. It will change your job. It will change your kids, your home. When you start tapping into that which is eternal, there's a river from heaven that flows. Amen? Praise the living God. Well, how did God make man, you know, to be this, this changeable being? In Genesis 1.25, it says, And God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. I, I can't even imagine how incredible it was after those six days of creation. But what we see now, even that, and we're giving glory to God. Everyone's right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Look at that sunset. Oh, thank you, Lord. Look at those trees. Thank you, God. Look at that, the, the flowers, you know. Thank you, Lord. Look at the polecat. You know, whatever it is. You, you know, you, you, you think how great it is, but this is corrupted. It's corrupted. I can't even imagine what it was before corruption. In fact, the Bible, I don't want to get ahead of myself, which I have about five times already this morning, but the, all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Yeah. Why? Because they're held in bondage to corruption. And it's us that are going to deliver them from it. Us. But we can't, we got to get away from the corrupted. That's why the Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. It doesn't mean don't have unsaved friends. It doesn't mean you can't talk with, you know, I, oh, it's taboo, I avoid it. No, that's why they built monasteries, because of, because of a lie of the devil. It mean, doesn't mean leave them. It means come out from the corruption of them. I don't listen to the jokes. I don't listen to their lies. I don't listen to the drama. I don't watch the drama. I don't, you know, the, the sci-fi or where the, where the horror movies. Don't do that stuff. You're just sowing corruption into your own life. Come out from that and eternity will be fulfilled in your life. All that God has. Amen? The first word here, it says, God made the beasts of the earth, right, according to his kind. Then it says, and everything that creeps on the earth. Two words for earth, but two different words. Eretz in the Hebrew is the first one, meaning the globe. It, the, the, you know, all of, all of the earth, the, the, the ball, earth. And the next one is Adama. Adama means the ground, the soil, red, right, remember? Compare this then when God creates man. Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make what? Man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 
The word for man is Adam. That's the root of the word earth. Adama. Soil. Ground. Red. He made us like soil. So whatever we sow into our lives, that's what we're going to reap. Don't be deceived. God isn't mocked. Whatever you sow, you will reap. If you sow unto corruption, you will reap corruption. If you sow unto eternal life, you will reap eternal life. Amen? Are you getting something? So we see, though, that, that the, the, the animals, they creep around on the ground. So we have a choice. We have a choice. Are we, are we wanting to only crouch on the ground? Just move around the ground and herd? That's why the world without God, they do everything by fashion, styles. What's hip? What's popular, right? The haircut, everyone gets their Look at the 80s, right? The women. Ay, 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 ay. What happened there? But, but style, what, what people wear, they go around like herds of animals because that, they just creep around on the earth when they could be planting in their life and produce what God wants for them in life. Not just for us, it will benefit everybody just like Noah. Your life isn't just you. That's why the scriptures say, every man not to think on his own thing, but on the things of others. What you sow into your life is going to be benefiting other people one day or hindering people one day. It's up to you. What you do. That's why time is so important. It says in Ephesians 5, oh Lord. Okay, it says in Ephesians 5, it says let's redeem the time because the days are evil corrupted so we have the opportunity to redeem there's three voices in in in, in the hebrew and we see that the, in greek excuse me and and the redemption is one i i uh is passive one is active and one is a middle voice the passive is i've been redeemed the active is christ has redeemed me and the passive is and the middle voice is i now must redeem I redeem the time because the days are corrupted, so I'm going to redeem this time. Do you realize that everyone in prison, almost anyway, I know there's some air, but almost everyone in prison is there because of what they did with their time. What they did with their time was given over to corruption, so they're now imprisoned in bondage. There's bondages maybe in your life right now. You can get out of them. By sowing into your life the Word of God. Amen. It'll deliver you. Amen? This is so important to understand. So God said, let's make man in our image. We'll give him dominion over all the creeps that just creep around on the earth. The herds, the fashion, there's, there's some fashions that, man, I, I would never, ever even consider looking at them. And that people go along with all this stuff, like herds of animals. Choo, choo, choo. Come out from among them, be separate. Don't allow corruption. Amen? Redeem the time. It says in, that's why it says in, in Isaiah, he, he tells us in, um, I believe it's the 51st chapter. He says, ho, ho, every one of you. Or is it 60? The word ho is uao, right? It's, it's means not a, a, a woman of ill repute on the street, right? It's, it's ho, H-O, meaning just bedazzled, a gasp, ooh, ah, oh. Ho, every one of you, come to me and buy. Come without price, without money. Come to me and buy, and I'll give to you that which is not corrupted. What is that? What can I buy from God? What can I, what's my, what do I redeem with? My, we see in Ephesians 5, my time. What I do with my time. Idleness is a, is a, terrible, is, is a terrible tool of corruption. Idleness is something that corruption can embed itself into a person's soul. You just sit around the house all the time, your imagination just, corruption takes over. 
people end up, you know, loony. They, they end up thinking such goofy things. That's why suicide takes place. Jesus says, let no idle word come out of your mouth. No word that's not engaging for life. No word that's not w willing to build and get you somewhere and help people get somewhere. Amen. So we see the name for man is Adam. It's the root for Adama, earth, soil, ground. So it kind of reminds us that we have options, don't we? Just you can take a patch of soil, a barren, uh, a barren piece of land, roots, uh, weeds, and junk, and people threw garbage there, and just produce it, nothing looking ugly. And you can take that soil, and you can tear all that out. You can till up that soil, and you can plant seeds and cause a garden that not only feeds you but everyone else in the neighborhood. Right? That's how he made us, Adam. The thing is, though, what grows isn't determined by the soil. It's determined by the seed. So whatever you sow, you will reap. Now, the soil doesn't determine what will grow, but the soil does determine how it will grow. And that's another part of this series. But By the incorruptible Word of God, the Bible calls it the incorruptible Word, we become new creations, don't we? Look at it in 1 Peter 1.23. Read it with me. It says this, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. We're born again. We become brand new creations by a seed from the Word of God. Without the Word of God, nobody can be saved. But He came. All who believe will be saved. Amen. James 1.18, the New Living Translation, read it. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. Greater than Adam. Greater than Adam. The greatest of all. Jesus, remember Jesus? He said this. He said, of all that's been created, brought into this earth, John the Baptist was the greatest, Right? Of all men brought in, all people. He says, but the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. Wow. Because we have the ones with the potential of allowing eternity come and be expressed and be exposed and accomplish and heal and deliver and provide for. Amen? We are the ones. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, read it out loud with me. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There's a newness of life. Our spirits, he takes our spirit out of us, and he puts his in. Brand new creation. Brand new. Never existed before. There's two words in the Greek for uh, uh, new. One is nuos, and it means to renew, to, uh, to recharge. To, it's, it's like reupholstering. You take a chair that's all beat up and tattered and torn, and you, you strip it all down to nothing, and you re-varnish it, and you put new foam on, you put cloth over it, and somebody comes in your house and says, oh, you have a new chair? Well, it's not new, but it's, it's new. It's renewed. That's the word new. But that's not the word used here. The other word in the Greek is kainos. Kainos means never existed before, a prototype. Never existed before. If anyone is in Christ, he never existed before. Brand new. Where did that come from? Because we were created to change. And the seeds of the Word of God brings life and life more abundantly into this death-doomed capsule body. Right? And that's why one day this corruptible will put on incorruption. And this mortal will put on immortality. The word mortal is just a Latin word. It means death doomed. I'm not death doomed anymore. My body may die if Jesus doesn't rapture me out of here. But I don't. 
And even my body isn't going to be lost. He's going to raise it up incorruptible one day. He won't lose anything. Anything. You are God's prized possession. You are. Those who call on the name of the Lord. You're the ones that are seated now with Jesus in heavenly places in, to, to get, receive His rest or that which is greater than what we can accomplish in this time. Romans, it's not in here, but it's 8.29, so it calls Jesus the firstborn of many brethren. He was when he was raised from the dead. Spiritually, we become God-men. Just like Jesus when he walked this earth. God's Spirit is in you. You're the temple of the living God. Amen? Amen. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And eternity can flow from you like rivers of living water. Amen? Your life, it's just not us being blessed and receiving blessings of life, but it's us giving those blessings out because the whole kingdom is about giving gifts. Even when Jesus raised from the dead, it says, and he gave gifts unto men. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to teach people how to do the work of the ministry. Their new ministry of this life in the kingdom. Look at Romans 12, 1 through 2. It says this. Are you, are you getting from this? Somebody say amen or oh me, praise God. Praise the Lord. It says this. First two verses, Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God. And the word beseech me, I'm begging you. Paul says, I'm begging you guys, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service or way to worship him. You really want to worship God, you, then give up. Do, do his word. Just like Noah. Be, be responsible, be integritable, be trustworthy that you're going to do what he says to do. It says this in second verse, and do not be what? Conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, uh, the word conform, sukamatizo, and what it means is to be mashed out, cookie cutter. It's like in a factory, you know, every cookie looks the same. Doom, 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 doom. The herd mentality, that's the world, right? All the fashion the same. Oh, that's the way they're hair in their, wearing their hair this year? I got to get a haircut. I got to make it look like that. Don't do that. That's why Peter said, listen, it isn't, women especially, it isn't in what you wear and the, the braiding of your hair and the, and the gold apparel. It's the hidden man of the heart. There's where you want that which is of great value. It, it, there's, there's much there. Why? Because that's where your life really flows from. Not your clothes or your hair. Not the color of your fingernails or your toes. Not the bangles and the beads. Nothing wrong with that. Praise the Lord. Make yourself look great. But if you're just following fashion, keeping up with the Joneses, Oh, my sister does this. We got to do this. Oh, my brother does this. We got no. You don't. What's incredible to one person might be corruption to you. You follow God, Amen. and every one of us has got burnt doing that, haven't we? By family, friends. Amen. The word transform, though. So we see. It, it, oh, the word right in the Greek it says, "Be don't be conformed." It means to be fashioned alike, basically, right? and in the same pattern. To be transformed is the word metamorpho. And with that, that's where we get the word, uh, we use the word metamorphosis, right? When a change like the Incredible Hulk, you know, uh, the metamorphosis takes place. It means to transform, to transfigure, and to change in a way like no other. Like no other. Be transformed. How? By renewing your mind. What you're sowing the word of God into your mind daily. I daily have to plant the word of the seeds of the word of God. And if I'm having issues in my marriage, I don't plant words of the, you know, the apocalypse. 
I don't plant the, the seeds of, you know, the four horsemen. I get in the scriptures and find promises of a good marriage. I see p examples of a great marriage and I put them in my mind because I want to be changed into a better husband then. I mean, I can't change my wife, but I can change me. You can't change your wife or your husband, but you can change you. Corruption sometimes isn't that the, about the problem. Corruption is a fact that you're unequipped to handle the problem. That's what corruption reveals. But I don't have to be equipped because the things that are impossible with man are possible with God. I want His intervention. I want Him coming through. Amen? When Jesus, you know, they said, what do you guys got? And um, as far as loaves and fishes, he says, well, we got five loaves and two fish. And he says, well, tell them to sit down. And he fed 5,000. That was just men who, with the women and children. They speculate at least 15,000 people. And afterwards, they picked up 12 basketfuls left over. There was, there was 12 times what they started with. And they fed everybody. Why? Because he took from eternity and he brought it into this corrupted time. He wouldn't let corruption limit him. He came out from among them. He was still with them, but he came out from among them. Their way of thinking, their way of doing, living by their five physical senses. That's why it's, the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, it says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways you acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Amen? Amen? Corruption just doesn't come be, to my vehicle because there's rust coming out. Corruption may come because, man, I'm not getting the same mileage I used to get. That's corruption. It became corrupted somehow. Your computer, why is it going so slow? It became corrupted. Why isn't it performing the way it should? It became corrupted. And we're put into places to bring eternity, to change that. Not just to help people have a better life, but to let them see there is a way where they can make no way. There is a Savior who will go abundantly above and beyond all we'll ever ask or think. There is a Lord who will, who will provide, who will heal, who will deliver to the utmost. Amen? He says, don't, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed. Let your minds be transformed in a way like it never was, like no other mind is made. How'd you do it? I got calls from all over the United States. How'd you do it? How'd you get that radio station? We just, the Lord told us to have one, so we just thanked them. All right, then it's obviously ours. We thank you for it, and for the last seven years, we just thanked them. And not only did we get it, all the finances came, all the provision came, and we're, we're up and running to this day. He says, by the renewing of your mind, anachinosis, there's where we get the word f not, not to be transferred, kainos, but nuos comes from that. In other words, my mind now is going to be re-upholstered. It's going to be redone. I'm going to get new stuff and put in. The old stuffing made me hurt when I would sit in this place of thought. But all of a sudden, I get new stuffing and I don't hurt there no more. The corruption. I can go through problems and the corruption isn't the baggage that comes to keep me from advancing any longer. I just keep going. No, God said, this is what's going to happen. Praise the Lord. Let's worship God. That's just incredible. Amen? Amen? That's the idea. Otherwise, it isn't so much the problem with the world that you're having. The corruption is what comes into your mind because of what you've seen, what you heard, what you smelled, what you tasted of life. What you felt. So God created us to get out of that. He created us in advance not to be held by corruption. That's why the Bible says when Jesus came, it says he was the light that shined in darkness and darkness could not take hold of him. 
corruption couldn't have anything to do with him. He went through this whole time in this earth, and corruption never touched him. In fact, when he died, the Bible says that the promise of God was, the Father, that he would not let his soul in hell nor his days see corruption. And so he didn't go to that fourth day. It was three days then he rose from the dead. Because the fourth day, the body starts to decay. How about you? How about you? Are you going to just be like the pack? Go along with the herd? Well, I hurt too. That's just sympathizing with people. You're hurting, I'm hurting. Oh, that's not what God wants. I'm not willing to do anything. I'm just going to go along, make you feel good like you're not the only one. How many of us take time when somebody gives us a bad story? Oh, yeah, you ain't heard nothing. What about me? You know what I went through? Corruption. Guys, corruption. Rather than saying, you know, that's too bad, but I have compassion for you. I want to feed you. Right? Jesus had compassion on them, so he said, let's feed them. Let's do something for them. I have compassion on you. I'm going to take out of eternity right now. I'm praying for you, and you're going to be delivered from this downtime. You're going to be delivered from this time of sorrow. You're going to be delivered from this wretchedness. You will be set free. Jesus said this, If you continue in my word, you're my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free of all corruption. Amen? Amen. Look at 2 Corinthians 4. Now, even though we work out our own salvation, our faith cannot be in our work. What we're doing, our faith has to be in what God has already done. It, our faith has to be in what we can, what he shows us of his finished work, of his finished work. Otherwise, I never enter into rest. It's still me just toiling away. Remember the corruption that come into the earth when God said to Adam, from this day on, you're going to toil on the face of this earth. I'm not, I don't want to toil anymore. It's not me. I'm not, so I don't look and have faith in my work and what I'm doing. I have faith in God and just do what he says. And when problems come or it doesn't happen when I think it should happen, or when it seems like to get worse, then I'm constantly on uh, if, if, you know, no, God said. But if faith is in my work and something worse happens or doesn't happen in time or, you know, the scenarios, it's, well, I guess this isn't for me. But it allows corruption to come into a mind. Thinking, ah, it isn't for me. I can't do it. Yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But you just got to leave corruption and you got to come into that which is incorruptible. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 11. See, trusting in the Lord and His finished work allows eternity to be manifested. Remember when the disciples toiled all night fishing? He said, hey, catch anything? Nah. He said, well, cast your nets to the other side of the boat. Peter said, man, we toiled all night. We worked this earth curse system all night and it came up with nothing. He said, just do what I say. Cast your net on the other side. They, they cast their net. They ended up having to call other boats. They filled their boat. It started sinking. And then they filled all the other boats with what was provided. Because Jesus saw that from eternity what was there. Not from a corruptible toiling circumstance what was there. Are you getting this? Listen, guys, he has plans for you above and beyond what you could ever ask or imagine. The, the book of Psalms, it says that his, that his plans for you are more than the sand in this earth. And yet we have Christians say, oh, if I, just, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do, Lord. What's one little thing? Well, I, my plans for you are more than the sand. I've been to the Sahara Desert. I, I, I've been to the major deserts of the earth. There's a lot of sand. I've been to the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. 
I've been to the Caribbean. I've been, been to the, uh, the Indian Ocean. I, there's a lot of sand on the beach, man. And His plans for you and me are more than the sand. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't matter where you're born. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your education. It doesn't matter your skills and your abilities. What matters is you saying, Yes, Lord, I'm going to take your promises. I'm going to sow them into my life. And I'm going to allow them to come up and give you glory. And man, I'll be joyful. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4, you there yet? 6 through 11. It says, For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Just think, we have the ability for the knowledge of His glory. His weightiness, His power, His holiness. And it says this, But we have this treasure... What did he call it? And where do we have this treasure? In earthen vessels. Why eternity was put into our hearts. Amen. And when we got born again, we had the ability to activate it. We have the ability to reach into it and let it flow from our bellies as rivers of living water into this earth. He says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that are excel the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Do you see this? We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. In other words, we have problems, but it, we, we, the corruption won't get to us. It says we're perplexed but not in despair. We're persecuted but not forsaken. Struck down but not destroyed. Read it, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our bodies. And that word may is really will or must be manifested. 11 verse says, For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. See, that's why th this is a great explanation why Christians can go through what the world goes through, which we will, right? But the corruption doesn't have to be stick to us. The corruption doesn't have to be a part of us. The circumstances, the word light is phos. It means a light of the sun, never kindled, so it never can be quenched kind of a thing. Not like the light of the moon, that the light quits shining as soon as the sun doesn't shine on the moon. And so the moon's light is on and off and on and off and on and off. But the sun isn't. It's constant. The light that shined out of darkness is now shown in our hearts. It never goes dark there. We'll always, we always have hope. He'll always show us a way of escape. He'll always give us a plan. Amen? Always. The word glory, doxa, means the dignity of, the honor of. And the word treasure, that's where we get the word thesaurus. It's, it's, it, and that's the word. It's the thesaurus. Treasure means where the most precious thing is held. If you get a dictionary, we call that what? A thesaurus. And it's a treasure held within a book. What's the treasure? Understanding because of definitions. Right? You gain an understanding. You get a treasure trove of understanding. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency won't be of us but of God. He'll let us know. He'll keep us in the know. He'll show us things to come. Amen? He'll lead us and guide us into all truth. That the power, the dunamis, that's the word dunamis. That's where we get the word dynamite. We think, well, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you receive power. Well, when we got born again, the power was in uh, is, was put within us. And there's where we have to start living. Let that power flow, amen? That, that dynamite of God. He says this, that we're troubled, and King James Version, I believe, that we're troubled in distress. King James Version comes to me, that's what I was kind of trained in. But it says this, that we're, we're, we're hard-pressed on every side, we're crushed. We're, not, we're, we're hard pressed on every side, we're perplexed, we're persecuted, we're struck down, uh, always bearing about the dying of the Lord. And that, that is um, 
a uh, present passive participle. In other words, it's an action that keeps going again and again and again. You're, you're always going to be struck down. You're always going to be in distress. You're always going to have that happening in your life from time to time. But, he says, but this. He says, but we're not crushed. Corruption can't get to us when we live according to the glory, according to eternity. We might be perplexed, but we're not never in despair. Corruption won't have a part of that. We might be persecuted, but not forsaken. We might be struck down, but not destroyed. Do you see that? We have an excellence. We have an excellence from God. Eternal life. The effects of corruption do not have to overcome you. Nor do you even have to feel the sting of it. You can come to the place where it just doesn't matter to you. Because you're so confident in eternity. You live there. You don't live in the corruption of this time. Because you don't sow for the corruption of this time. You only sow seeds into this garden of eternal life. And so it comes up. That's all that comes up. So problems may happen, but I'm just eating the fruit of eternal life. Issues might take place. Nope, I know it's going to succeed. I know it's going to be great. I know we're growing. I know it's going to be wonderful. You've all seen me go through these things. And it isn't easy. I'm not saying it's easy. But we have, this is what we have to apply to our life. And you see the outcome. You see the outcome. Churches in 35, 37, 37 nations, schools, daycares, free clinics, radio stations. And a little, little burg like Merrill, Wisconsin. I'm not getting the glory. I don't want it. It isn't because how great I am. It's, I'm telling you, it's because of the greatness of God. I just work to enter into his rest and allow that to flow through. And you all did too. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing all this. But you said, yeah, okay, we'll follow that doofus over there. We'll listen, yeah. That, that's one thing I get, you know, like Moses. He's the only one that heard God, yet they said, yeah, we'll follow you. I pray, everyone brags on Moses. What about the people that followed him? How about Joshua? We're going over the Jordan River, and we're going we're gonna to fight giants for a couple decades. Hey, let's go with you. Praise the Lord. Everyone brags on Joshua. What about the people that said, yes, hey, we'll go? Uh, they had to have some confidence of what God can do for them. It wasn't just the man. And that's what it takes as a congregation. That's what it takes as a family. You have to have confidence in what God can do, not just because of a person. Amen? Because people, we all fall. We all fail. We're all fallible. But God doesn't mind. It doesn't matter. He says, I'll never remember that stuff. I'm only going to remember. I'm only writing down the good that you you did. I'm only writing down when you obeyed. That's all I'm knowing. You can't be defeated. God's purpose is going to come to pass as you plant the word. That's why out in the entrance way, we have these conf we call them little confessions. But it, I just took the word of God for circumstances, and I said, here, if you're having problems, like in your mind. Here's a confession over your mind. I just took the scriptures, Colossians 1, 13 through 14, uh, some confessions, and um, through there, and just, there's a confession. Let your mind be changed. Start speaking the word over it, amen? Here's why I have a sound mind. You just, I, you just stick your name where it says. 2 Timothy 1, 7, 1 John 2, 2 or, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 16, Ephesians 5, 6, Philippians 4, on and on and on all down to Proverbs 16.3, and it's that talk, you're telling your mind what God says about it. And you're sowing the seed, so your mind is going to change. How about your husbands? You want to be a better husband? There's a confession out there. Confess this over your life. Don't be a doofus. Be a God-man. Amen? Be a God-man. Here's a confession of a wife. You know, just don't be an anchor for, in your household and over your a husband. Be a, be a God-wife. One that helps produce in the home. Every one of us are to change so we can produce for the betterment of life of those around us. Here's a deliverance confession. 
you're bound, you're, you need deliverance. Here's a deliverance confession. What happens is people, they don't want to live as a garden. They want to live part of the herd and just run to a priest to say, hey, make me look like something else. It ain't going to happen. Yeah, you can get healed, but you're never going to change. That's why old Roberts, you know, he said of all the people during the healing revivals that got that healed, at best, and it's, he says it may even be an exaggeration, but 40% kept their healing. Why? Because they, they lived the life of the world rather than saying, I'll sow to let God produce in me. Healings are wonderful. Everyone needs them from time to time. Everyone needs a miracle. But that's not God's best. God's best is you plant seeds to where you never need, need a miracle. It's your living miracle. You're just walking in the good stuff. Amen? Even Smith Wigglesworth, you know, he couldn't see and his daughter couldn't hear, his daughter Penny. And when, when he was up on the stage and he would forgot his glasses and he's yelling, Hey, Penny, bring me my glasses. She couldn't hear him. And he well, uh, bring me my glasses. He starts screaming, bring me my glasses. The newspaper the next day in England said, a faith healer can't see and his daughter can't hear. You know, but the results were that people were blessed. He brought blessings with him everywhere he went. Here, here's one that just says, in him, in Christ, who you are. Confessing these things, trust me, trust God, amen? Eternity is in your heart. Your future is actually in you. And you're the only one that can let that flow. I can pray for you to be healed, but I can't make your future come to pass. I'll tell you what, by the power of eternity, by the power of God, I can pray and see a lot of speeding up of things. I can see a lot of things taking place. I've seen a lot of people get jobs that couldn't find jobs. I know people, most people don't even want them anymore, but I, a lot of people get jobs that need jobs or get finances that need finances. And that's great, but I'm telling you what, live where you don't even need to have that miracle for it anymore. Daily planting the Word of God. Listen, I don't know where you are out there, where you are in the world. You might be in, in, in some country where I've been in those countries where you're, it's a caste system. You're... you're born into a part of society and that's it. You have no hope of getting anywhere else. Well, that's because of the government you're in and that's because of the place you're at. But God says this to you, it doesn't matter to me. You need to allow God right now move you, take you, elevate you. Look at Joseph. He was a prisoner. He ends up becoming the second in command of the whole known world. He ends up being blessed with finances beyond what he could get. This is for everyone in here, but listen. I know two things, that when you're attacked from the world as a Christian, when you're attacked from the world, it means you're going to grow. It means, not maybe, it means you will grow in substance. You'll grow in planes, trains, and automobiles, right? Lands, businesses, houses. You're going to grow in money, wealth. You're going to grow in opportunities. When you're attacked from within, the church, family, you don't think it can't happen. Well, you have to be only born again a couple days, I guess, for that. But, you know, it, it, that you're not going to get attacked by some misguided uh, uh, Christian or Christian that refused to keep corruption from their mind, and so they're going to get all crossways with you. But when you're attacked by family or, or church, it constantly guarantees that you're going to grow in authority. You're going to grow in power. God's promoting you. God's going to elevate you. But if you let the corruption through them gates come in, woe is me, poor me, why me? You don't get that reward because you, reap, you will reap the corruption rather than the eternal that was meant with the persecution. That's why it says in 2 Corinthians 4, right, we're persecuted daily, but we're not forsaken. I'm going to pray for you out in, the, in, in wherever you are, on the radio, on TV, wherever you are on the Internet. I'm going to pray with you right now, and there's some circumstances that God's going to immediately change for you. 
But he does that always to give us kind of the breathing room to start applying the word and sowing it into our own hearts. Miracles are wonderful, but that's only giving us a chance kind of to catch our breath and do what we're supposed to be doing. And if you're in here and you need a miracle, it's yours. It's yours. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, just receive, guys. Enter into his rest. You know, a lot of times I'll be praying on a prayer line and I get up to pray for somebody, what do you want from the Lord? And all of a sudden they start praying, especially in tongues. Oh, I say, shut up. All you did so far has done nothing. Now's the time to just be quiet and receive. Enter into his rest. Let him. That's what I'm telling you now. It's not time for you to do something else to keep doing what you've done even. It's time to just receive. Let God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless these wonderful people. I bless them. You're here in our midst. We're gathered in your name, and you are love. So I ask that you embrace every individual with an incredible hug of divine love. You are grace. Envelope every person with the wonderful grace, the, the abilities, the, the provision that you have, that you provide. Right now, move in their lives. Flow like a mighty river in Jesus' name. There he is. Move mightily. Holy Spirit, come. Fill their hearts. Fill their lives. Change their circumstances. Turn it around right now. Marriages, I command you're healed minds you're delivered in the name of jesus satan loose their minds thoughts you i cast you down i command that every voice stop except for the voice of the living god the voice of the most high god the lord jesus christ speak lord speak to them lord god revive them resurrect them renew them in jesus name Father, I thank you. I pray for every body. I command that every organ and every tissue in every body functions perfectly right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command every cell to be a life-giving cell in the name of Jesus. In any cell that's taking life from any person, you die and leave that body. You have no place in them. Father, now in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory. We give you honor. We bless your holy name. We praise you. Just lift your hands to him. Receive, receive, receive. It's just your turn to receive. Just like you sat there, I did the talking, you did the listening. That's the same right now. You're just going to lift your hands and let God do the doing, and you're just going to rest. You're just going to take it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Somebody's back in this house is being healed right now. Your back is being healed right now. I believe it was a pinched nerve, but there's also been or a deterioration of, of, of discs and even bone in your back, uh, whoever that is. Just lift your hands to him in the name of Jesus because there's a creative miracle taking place in your life right now. There's a creative miracle. God, thank you for creating discs. Thank you for creating bones. Thank you, Lord God, that those nerves are loosed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you glory and honor and praise. I bless your holy name. I praise you, mighty God. I praise you, mighty God. There's a woman watching. Your name is Jane. Jane, your marriage will not end. It will not end. I know you've been so grieved. I, f I just feel that grief. But the Lord says this, I'm raising you up mightily. And as you're raised up mightily, as you follow me, as you obey me, he will eventually come. Don't focus on the man. Focus on the God-man. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Focus on me, says the Lord. I'm turning that around for you right now. Jane, listen to me. Finances are not a problem any longer. Don't let that be part of your excuse. Finances are not a problem any longer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We worship you. We praise your holy name. We give you glory and honor. We give you all the praise, all the praise. Just start praising them, loving on them. Start worshiping them, church, wherever you are, wherever you're listening from. Thank you, Lord God. All in this 
auditorium, just start worshiping. Give me your heart. Give me your time. Give me your life. Focus on him. Focus on him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's somebody in here, you know, the pressure of your life seemed to have been great. You seem to have been in a place where your soul is kind of becoming unfrazzled. You're, you're, you're lost all your strength and um, you're, you're tired a lot. And you think somehow that playing or doing something other than work is going to re-energize you and it doesn't. Vacation doesn't re-energize you. It just causes you to refocus a little bit. Causes you to forget about the problem a little bit. The only thing that energizes you and re-energizes you is the Word of God. Take that time and get into the Word. Open your Bible. Read your Bible. And watch the very life of God, the energy of God, come and fill you and cause you to rise up above the problems. And you'll have the same energy as when you go into the office as when you come back from the office. Take that time. Take time during the day to just get alone with God. Five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. And just bask in His presence and just say, Fill me with Your love. Fill me with Your Spirit. And let Him wash you. Let Him cleanse you. The washing and renewing by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Father, now I bless this wonderful people from the top of their head to the toes of their feet. I bless them, Father. They've been blessed coming in. I bless them going out. They're leaving here and applying this stuff to their life. They're going to see change after change after change, growth after growth after growth. That the, the, the bear, so to speak, the wild animal, the vicious attacks from outside that seem to be coming at them are going to stop in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And your destiny, Father, are going to start to be seen by them. The destiny you have for them, the places you have for them, the positions you have for them are going to start to be not only seen by them, but acknowledged by them and lived out by them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for making us gardens. Thank you, Lord, that we get to choose we don't have to stay in the life we're in. We can plant your seeds of eternal life in us and see dramatic changes in our lives, our characters, our, our, the way we husband, the way we wife, the way we, we, the way we live as students or, 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 or workers or bosses. Thank you, Lord, for that change. And in Jesus' name, the family of God all said, Amen and amen. God bless you a bunch. Give the Lord a hand of praise and honor in his house.